Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sandra Kingsley. I work for Smart Border. Today I will be showing you an introduction to SC Web Performa. I will be showing you in our testing environment uh, and only so you can see the entire process of posting. Uh, if you have any questions after this video, feel free to submit a help ticket to help at smartboarder.com. All right. What you see on my screen is the new login page. There is no downloading involved in SD Web Performa. This is web oriented 100%. We do advise using Google Chrome right now until all the other browsers are thoroughly tested in this environment. But for right now, uh, SD Web Performa is 100% live and is working quite well in Google Chrome. So here is your login screen. And you require username and password. You can do forgot username and password as well in case your users do forget them to help them reset their passwords. So I created a demo user. And this demo user has access to Performa and parties. I'll show you in just a moment. You'll log in. Your uh, SB web modules that you have access to will be displayed on this front screen. And the global events, this is all work in progress right now, but you can search through the entire system. So today in Smart Border, we have multiple logins, but in SB web, we're hoping to have every module just one login, and you will be able to search um, right here. All you have to use is some keywords or numbers. Uh, if you wanted to look for a specific shipper reference number, you're just going to key in the number and click search. And this will search the entire database for your whatever document you're looking for. All right, let's start here at the front screen. What you see is your modules. Then you have utilities. Here is a little um, fun feature that SmartBoard uh, has implemented. We can do a dark theme. And or you can do a light theme, whatever you prefer. Or the last one is a blue and gold theme. For this demo, I'm going to keep you here in the blue and gold. Um, <clears throat> some people have a hard time seeing in the dark theme, so I'm just going to keep it as easy as possible. Over here on the right, you have your demo user. Um, this will show your, you or your users which person is logged in. And if you needed to log out, you can or change your password. This little um, icon here, the person icon, is a way to log out. Now moving on to our modules. Oh, I'm sorry, really quick, let me show you our menu. Here you can get to your modules from here as well. This also gives you the find document feature and your recent folders. <clears throat> Excuse me, your recent folders, your smart folders. Okay, we'll get to that later on in the video. All right, so now here is parties. Parties is just like profiles, or as you may know, um, SB transaction parties. This is your front screen. In all of the modules, this is very consistent. You will see most re recent documents. To explain what recent documents is or define, recent documents are the user's most recent documents, not the company's most recent documents. It'll show you last access and in what stage that that document is in. Now, to show the user the list, you will just have to click this arrow here, show party list. And this will give you um, a very small list, or you can make it larger to 20 items on the screen. It will show you all of your parties in this grid. You can search, delete it, or just have the default open. And then you can change companies if you wanted to filter down even further. Then here on the right-hand side, if you wanted to delete a party, you can easily click here and delete or refresh your list. Down here on the right-hand side, uh, this is called a FOB. This is a new feature for SB Web. Uh, it is for main, mainly you can use it from the computer standpoint or if you're going to do your performance or your parties, creations, et cetera, from your tablet. This is a feature that will make it easier for your thumb and your right hand. All right, so this is what a new party will look like. 
All right, here we go. The status of the document here is on the left. What you see now is a new format of SmartBoard. These are called cards, a card layout. In the middle is your general information. Over here on the right, alias. Each card does have a header uh, name, so you know what the card is pertaining to, manufacturer, your contacts, and your party history. This will show you the history of when it was created, modified, the description, and um, by whom. Okay, up here on your right hand, uh, left hand side, you'll see actions, validate, save, discard pending changes. This is if your user had created and done, um, and made a mistake and they want to go back to the way it was, that's what discard pending changes is used for, validation and saving, very easy. On the right hand side down at the fob, you can validate or you can save from here as well. Okay, returning to dashboard. We're going to leave this screen so that I can show you a party that has already been completed. Okay, here's what it looks like when you have your party data filled in. The address, you can have multiple addresses added. You just have to use the add here. Your manufacturer ID will be auto-generated uh, as the user is filling in the name and the address, et cetera. All right, moving on now, that's our party. Okay. This little circle here that you see me using, this is just to return you to home. There's a lot of ways to navigate through SB Web Performa or SB Web itself. You can use this here on the left hand side. This, these buttons here on the left side will also move you down to the party list or the dashboard. And this is our import party feature if you wanted to add your parties via Excel. Okay. But right now we're going to go back to home. Now our products. Let's take a look at those. Same concept. Again, SB Web is very consistent in the way that everything is laid out and the functionality. So actions, your new product. Okay, you have your cards with the headers explaining exactly what they are. Your classifications, let's show you what that looks like. You can have multiple classifications to one product. Your tariff picker here, this is the newest, um, well, we used to have an ellipsis and now we have these boxes. You would click here, and this is what your tariff picker is going to look like. You can type in Apple and then press Enter, and Smart Borders Tariff Picker will pull up any description that has the word Apples in it. You can also search by tariff number if you like, partial tariff number or full tariff number. Effective dates, okay, that's our tariff picker there. Um, binding ruling. Additions and deductions can be added, multiple country of origins. This is brand new to SB Web as well for our product. So now you can have one product and store multiple country of origins. You can also store multiple pricing and multiple packaging. So now we're giving the user more, um, more pieces to add to your product so that it's easier for your users to use the products as they go along. When they do have multiple pricing and packaging, uh, when you pick their product, uh, we do give a pop-up so that they would have to choose which pricing, which packaging, or which country of origin they would like to use at that time. Okay, that is our product data. Okay, we're gonna go back to home. We're gonna get you into uh, Performa. Before we go into there, all users will be given the restricted party screening module free at no cost at all. So you can run as many queries as you'd like if you need to use it. This system module, this is for when you're going to do your user creations. Let's look at that really quick. Over here on the left hand side, you'll see users. You'll see the company that the user is built under. Your filter, just like we saw earlier, which is all users deleted, username search. We are here. There we go. We can type in a search and press enter, or you can select search here, and it will show you your users that are built under there. Inside the users, this is what they will look like. Email, name, username, phone, and over here on the right-hand side is your, ro your roles that the user will have. You have optional roles. You have ones that you must give. So, for instance, if you're creating a new performer user, you want to select this role, and then this one will give you your optional roles. 
So if you don't want them to see the 3470 or 3461 and 7501, don't click that. If you do want them to see it, then you will have to click it as you're creating your users. Now for your admin users, if you want them to be able to create users, you will have to give them SD Web user access. This will give them this module that you are seeing right now. Username, um, email, phone, and then set password. Once you're all set with giving them their modules and their username, email, and name, you'll click set password. Here it's going to ask you for your admin password, the one who's creating this user, and then you give your user a new password in to confirm it. Password restrictions can be bypassed. You just have to click this button and Smart Border's um, validation for the password will just, you can have it be whatever you want. Okay, that is our user module. Get out of there. Let's go back to our home. Now it's time to show you Performa. So let's click Performa module. This dashboard, this is your first actual module you're seeing. So this dashboard has a lot more information. And as you build your templates and your entry activity, if you do have that as well, you'll see that the screen will fill up nicely. Your new template or delete. Here's Performa templates. You, you can have, I believe it's up to six on this screen I'm, or five, don't quote me on that one. But I did create one so that you could see what it looks like. So here, now once your users select, template, they can use edit or use template. Use template is going to turn it into a performa. Edit is going to keep it at a template stage. So right now let's click edit. So you want to see what the template looks like. All right. It is very easy to see that this is a template and not a performa so that your users do not get confused. Over here on the left hand side, you will see template, the name and description. The actions are going to change for a template. For instance, you cannot post one, obviously. Uh, you can save one, you can copy, you can create. Ship reference uh, number is not mandatory. It does look like it is mandatory, it is not mandatory. That's actually a work in progress that will be fixed in the future. All right, let's get out of this template. Now we're going to go down here to recent documents. Once again, this recent documents are my documents as my I am the user. This is my login. These are my documents. You cannot see the entire company's recent documents here. Then on the last card of the screen is your entry activity. Here is if you are already using Smart Border Shipper side, you will know that you have entry activity. You will see what that performer did, the entry it created, the documents that came from it. If you did want to look inside of here and you do have the permission to do so, you will just click it, you'll have a pop-up. Here will be your entry details, the invoice details, ABI messages if there was an acceptance or a rejection, you will see your release and your entry summary here. And those will pop up to open up even further. And then the documents, if there are any documents attached to this Performa. Okay, so now let's create a new Performa. Okay, our status card, it's unposted. Uh, company, shipper reference number. I'm not going to fill out every single one for you. I'm just gonna show you what they look like. And then I will post one so you can see what happens when that's done. So on your header card, you have everything you are familiar with. You're doing a piece build to currency for this performa. Shipping quantity and unit of measure, that's a new one that was just added to this, this shipper, uh, excuse me, this performa. Carrier code. Um, I do want to show you something different though, because this is web based. There is not always pick list. Sometimes you have what's called autocomplete. So your user, let's say that they know their carrier code, they can start typing, and SmartBoard is going to look for it. They're going to see if they can find it for them. Let's say they don't know the carrier code, they just know the name. Again, SmartBoard is going to look for it and try to help the user. And then to select it, you can select it with your mouse, or you can just tab off, and it'll take the very first one that was selected. All right, down here you have your shipper, seller, manufacturer. You, we have the same as feature here. So same as shipper, it's going to come. The shipper is going to default down here, okay? And then the same as, as long as the toggle is on, it's going to shoot over to the seller and manufacturer. Your users can shut this off, 
just by taking the toggle off. That will clear out the party data. Then they can go down here on the lower right hand side and pick party. This party um, editor is where you're going to choose which party you wanted to take instead. So let's say, let's take this one instead and it'll fill in for you. This manufacturer's toggle is still on, so it's still same as shipper. Down here, your buyer and consignee, same exact feature, except this one is same as buyer. So your users will have to pick their party for their buyer. Okay, let's go with this one. And as long as that toggle is on, you will notice that the consignee auto filled in for them. References. This is new for SBWEM. Now you can add references to your Performa itself. This here, this button here, will give you a list of different references that you can add. PO number, for instance, invoice number, customs entry number if you have one, so on and so forth. All you have to do is select that reference type and then fill in the number. There we go. And you can have as many references as you like. Down here on the bottom of the Performa, you'll notice now we're getting into the line data. So the lines, you are able to do copy line, you can delete the line, a new line, or a new line from product, which is going to force your client to pick from your product database. This is can be made mandatory. So for instance, you do not want your clients just create, creating products all by themselves. They must pick from a product database. We can turn new line to gray so that they cannot select it. They would have to actually pick from a product database. And then the last way to add lines to inside Performa, which is brand new, um, is importing. You can now import your Performa lines. You do not have to import the entire Performa. You can just import your lines. It will be via Excel. Uh, the template here is a hyperlink, so you'll have to, call, you'll have to select here. And then that template is going to download down here to your computer itself, and it will open it up. Oh, sorry, I'm on a training video, so it's not able to open it up on here uh, unless I put Excel. But anyways, so it does download to the computer. It opens up as an Excel template. And then you will just drop the file, or you can browse here and add your lines to your Performa. All right, let's get us back to our Performa. Okay, so now I'm going to go add a line. I'm going to add a line. Let's see. We'll click new line. So it doesn't make me go look for a product. So right down up here on the left hand side, you're going to see your line details, your product name, your part number, description, and so on and so forth. Your quantity, your unit of price, your unit of measure, and value of goods. Now let's say, oh, I did actually want to pick a, a product. So I will do pick commodity. If your user has a very large product database, we are not going to show them a list of the products at first. You're actually going to have, we're going to have to have them search because their database is so large. So let's, maybe it's, okay, good. So once they then, once the search finds something, it's going to show you your product codes that has the word test in it because that's how I searched. So for instance, let's take this one. We're going to select that product. And now it's going to fill in the data that I had already stored inside my product. You will see that a few of the areas have grayed out because we want the user to pick their product. And those areas that are stored inside the product, we do not want the user to alter. For instance, if that's how you would like your company ramp. So in case you don't, and it does lock them, but they need to make a, for instance, they need to add a country of origin. All they have to do is come down here and unlock the field, and it'll reopen them for them. Okay, so let's say, oh, I did. I needed to add my country of origin. So here's all of my country of origin. Oh, we also have a favorite list, in case you've never seen this before. Let's say I favorite this one and this one. So next time I open this pick list, those two are going to be my very first two country of origin. All right, so now I've picked my country of origin. And I'm going to add some weight and my product. Okay, I'm going to need my classification is over here. This is going to be a little bit different, but you can get used to it quite quickly. You can add another tariff to it. 
if you have multiple HTSs for this actual product, uh, the value itself, okay, and then the quantity. Now let's say, for instance, I wanted to validate. You'll see the FOB itself has done, it's created new actions, or it's pulled in new actions, I should say. So you could do a new line right from here, new line from product right from here, say validate or back to parent document. Your parent document is the original Performa. Okay, so we're gonna go back. So now I'm in my, I'm right back to my Performa. I've added my line, I have my weight, everything looks fantastic. I wanna validate, see if I missed anything. So now I'm gonna validate. Now you're going to see two different colors. You're gonna see red and you're gonna see orange. Red is a fatal error, which means your users cannot post this performer without adding a ship reference number. Orange is going to be your warning color. Okay, we have a validations up here on the right hand corner. These are all navigationable. So if you're not entirely sure where the motor transportation is, you just have to click it and see what's gonna bring you to where that error is so that you can fix it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to post this performa. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna take this posted one, so I know that there's no validation. I'm gonna copy it. So, copy performa to new folder. Okay, it copied the entire performa that I had picked and, but it wipes out the ship reference number. We don't want to copy that over. So I'm going to write in my, my shipper reference number. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to post to broker. Okay, posting it. This is our smart borders warning you. Just so you know, we're posting it. Then you will watch your status card on the left hand side. It queued for post. And it has posted and assigned a SB shipper reference number. Everything is up here on the left-hand side. Okay. And also added for you a reference of the SB shipper reference number. If you would, if, um, we have this actually functionality to put the shipper reference number down here as well. And now to print, you're going to go up here to actions if you needed to print your performa. Okay, it's gonna to download to the computer. And there's your performer printed. In the future, we do have printing and emailing coming. Uh, on the left-hand side of your performer, you're gonna see smart folders. Uh, we're gonna get more into detail with that at a later date, because that is still a work in progress. Uh, but this is SB Web Performa. I hope you guys enjoy our new module, and um, if you are interested in getting in, in there and playing around, again, this is a live database, so your clients or yourself can go in there and post a performa. We'll go directly to your broker site. Thank you so much for your time today, and again, any questions or you would like to uh, get set up to log in here, just submit a Zendesk ticket to help at smartboard.com. And thank you so much for your time. Have a good day.